Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to look at Reddit, of course, we're doing Reddit content. Remember to like, comment, subscribe for the engagement, whatever. Follow me on Instagram and I might just follow you back. Check out my podcast channel, check out my main channel. I'm gonna make a new video every single day this month up until Christmas, aren't you lucky? <laughs> now, let's get on with it before I lose my cool. Am I the arsehole for not staying home for the nights with my daughter while my wife goes out with her friends? Background, my wife rarely goes out with friends. Also, straight away. Six times a year and has never been very social and prefers spending time with me. Doubt. I am more social, but that has declined since we are focused on our family. We have a two-year-old daughter and I spend time with the same three friends once a week for games night. Sometimes in person, sometimes online. I have three other friends that I see once every two months also for games night. If I go out, my wife will tend to our daughter. I often still help with dinner, bedtime, but sometimes leave earlier than this. My daughter's... Bedtime is 7.30 p.m. And she often sleeps through the night without fuss. Wakes up fussing maybe 5% of the time. This is a lot of backstory and it's not interesting, my dude. I always offer for my wife to sleep in the next day or something similar in exchange for me going out so it's not a one-sided thing. Scenario. My wife made plans to spend an evening this weekend out with friends. She would be out from 6 p.m. until late. After she made those plans, I was invited to my friend's birthday thing and my second friend group. If I went, I'd be gone from 5pm until late. Last time I saw them was exactly one month ago. Then just stay in. Does this person hear themselves? Your wife made the plans first. Besides, it's your friend's birthday every single year. Who cares? I brought this plan up with my wife as I wanted to make arrangements for a family member to take our daughter for the evening. She was irritated by this and argued that I should stay home. I have since spoken with a family member who's happy to take our daughter at 5 p.m. and have her stay the night and I've communicated this to my wife. I made it clear that this will not affect her plans at all. I will be responsible for drop off and drop off and pick up of our daughter and I will not ask anything of my wife because I understand it is rare for her to have a night out like this so I don't want her to change her plans at all. She thinks I should stay home her arguments she says that since she always covers for me i should also cover for her she doesn't want to ask this family member to have our daughter for the night because she thinks we ask too much of them my arguments i'm covering for her this family member loves watching our daughter my wife is often quick to agree to leave our daughter there for sleepovers plenty of eat other evenings out of convenience so i don't know why this time it's too much to ask i feel like she wants me to stay at home as a form of punishment for going out more frequently than she would prefer why do people get married to people that they just don't like? Like, if you think that your partner would punish you for going out, punishment feels too strong of a word. Use a synonym then. Google it. I don't think there is any major resentment behind this or anything. I just don't know how else to describe this feeling. Am I the arsehole for making plans to go out the same edits? Oh my God, why is there a whole paragraph of edits? Yeah, okay, congratulations. I'm not reading all of those edits, my dude. Let's see what people say. You're the arsehole, not a big one. This is more about the emotional load than logical reasoning. Your wife is likely not going to be enjoying herself the same way she would if you had stayed at home. She isn't necessarily going to worry all night, but she will be aware that your daughter is out the house. She's going to mentally check in. Now they're driving over. Now she's likely setting them down. Now you're picking her up. Time for bed. Every time she mentally checks in, she exerts a little effort. Maybe she glances out the window to check the weather is good for driving. Maybe she texts her watch or phone to see if you called. However, the energy of even have, like simply having a thought adds up. If your wife is like many parents I know, especially the main caregivers, she is always alert. She is always on. I know exactly what this person is talking about. It's like whenever, it's like when I had my rats and, you know, if I, if I needed to do something for a weekend, I would get one of my friends to stay over to look after, especially like as the rats got older and stuff, you know? So I'd, I'd, I'd ask one of my friends very nicely if they'd stay over to, to, you know, just check on them and feed them and that kind of thing. And you do worry and you do text and you're like, oh, how are my rats doing? It's exactly the same thing as a three-year-old child. I totally understand. <laughs> arsehole. Am I the arsehole for requesting my next door neighbor to make her toddler stop crying? What? Then you make sense. Need some advice. Context. I, 36F, live next door to a new tenants who moved in some six months ago. They have a toddler, two to three years in age. He shrieks at all times of the day and just does the whole throwing himself on the ground tantrum thing multiple times a day. Due to the hybrid work model, I work from home three days a week. It's become hybrid work model. Why do people like <laughs> fancify things? 
hybrid work model. Just say you work from home three days a week, my dude. It's becoming a regular occurrence to have multiple instances of managers' clients asking why there is a child crying. Over the weekend, I met my neighbour upstairs and she asked me if I woke too early with a shock. Context, last Saturday, the whole building woke up at 5.45 in the morning because the child was screaming and it went on for a good 20 minutes. Info, the child is healthy. The mum is a stay-at-home mum. There is no neglect. Now on to what happens today. I'm working on something critical while handing off my responsibilities due to a transition and have to be have back-to-back -back calls. Over the course of four hours, I had to keep pausing my call. At one point, an important client in another continent asked me if I needed to be excused to take care of my child. I should reschedule the call. Another person in the call chimed in with the sentence we should not be neglecting a child just because our call is running long. Well, that's nice, at least. I apologised to them and informed that it was my neighbour's child. They mentioned how it sounds like it's happening in my house. Ooh, conspiracy theory. After the call ended, I went to the Bagley and in a very respectful way, asked the mum if the child was unwell. She didn't like it and asked why. I asked her again if the baby is unwell. She said no. She mentioned she took away something that he was trying to eat and that's why he was crying. Explained to her what happened on my calls and she snapped with, he's a baby, she snapped with, he's a baby, what do you expect? I asked her if I didn't speak to the child's mother, who else do I speak to? Explained to her that I'm completely understanding the challenges of being a mother and sure it's overwhelming, but it happened so many times today it's not letting me focus, she started crying. Was I the arsehole? No. No. He's crying loudly as I type this. Took a voice recording, but I don't think there's a way for me to attach it. <laughs> saw a few folks asking me to move. What? What? Who do children think they are? No assholes here. Horrible situation. I suggest buying a decent headset, which will reduce background noise, checking your team settings. I'm in a flat, had builders hammering directly on my wall. I don't care about your life, dude. Whatever. I would say not the asshole. That baby is the I'm joking. They can't help it. No one can help it. It's just difficult. Maybe invest in getting loads of egg boxes to make homemade soundproofing. Unfortunately, I guess it's just a fact of life that children and babies will cry unless we kept them all in a cave until they'd reached maturity and then were allowed out. But apparently that's against the Geneva Convention or something. <sighs> Not the arsehole, no arseholes. It's just life. Am I the asshole for walking out of my birthday dinner after seeing my ex is there? I'm new here. I made this account just to get your opinion. English is not my first language. I, 32F, was with my ex-boyfriend, 43M, for a little over two years. I broke up with him a month ago because he took our relationship for granted. He thought because I loved him and I did love him that I would never ever leave him, even if he didn't make any effort to show me that he cared and loved me. I was the one who was always trying to see him and I was the only one who would share everything with him, even if it was a stupid thought or idea, because I loved that. <laughs> oh... Oh, I loved having his opinion, but he wouldn't do that. He was so private and to the degree that I asked him if he was married. I know he's not, but it got me thinking. Another issue I had with him is me wanting to meet his me wanting him to meet my parents. It's something important to me, and I thought that after two years it shouldn't be something not normal. True, very normal. He would always come up with an excuse not to do that. He even said that my parents want to meet him in order to get rid of him and set me up with someone else. I told him it was my wish to introduce them, not my parents' request, and that's not true. My parents would never set me up with someone and they would let me pick who I want to be with. It's after this that I thought maybe we wanted different things in life, we should go our separate ways. Anyway, comes to the reason why I'm posting here. My birthday was a couple of days ago. A mutual friend of ours told me she wants to take me out for dinner on this occasion. I accepted because we are great th friends. We work together and we do hang out all the time. She jokingly said she would invite him too. I asked her please not to do this and that if he's coming, I'm not going to go. She assured me that she's just kidding, she wouldn't do that. I then explicitly said to her, if you came, I would leave, she told me not to worry. Well, we walked into the restaurant and guess who's sitting at my table? If you guess my ex, you are right. I immediately left and went home. She tried to stop me, but I left anyway. Then she got mad at me because I made her look bad for not staying. This friend is awful. She said that my ex drove 45 minutes one way to be with me on my birthday and I should have sucked it up for the duration of, it's her birthday. Who are, who the flip are these people? They make me so mad. I want to swear, but I can't. You wet lettuces. <sighs> it don't have the same effect. It doesn't scratch the itch. I think when you swear it activates a different neural circuitry in the brain. So if, if you stub your toe, step on a piece of Lego and swear, it helps relieve the pain a bit because it's a different... I think they found this out from studying chimps. I don't know. I'm so sure I heard that from somewhere. Am I going to look it up? No. It's just, it's not doing the same thing, you mother flippers. Anyway, now she's not talking to me. Good.
Good riddance, the bad rubbish. Ditch the friend. I asked some other friends their opinions. Some were with me, but others told me that maybe I should have stayed because he made effort to show up and maybe he would start to change now. It's her birthday. She can spend it how she wants. Who are these freaks? Yeah, he showed up. It wasn't as the idea in the first place. It was my friend who asked him to come. Am I the asshole for leaving? You're not the asshole. Your friend is the asshole. Your boyfriend is a walking red flag. Well, some people congratulated me when I left him, so you are right. <laughs> oh, poor OP. Good Lord. Block the friend, not the asshole. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe for more videos tomorrow, every single day this month. Check out my podcast channels. Check out my main channel. See you guys next time. Bye.